This is Judd, and I am daydreaming about dragons. Thinking about last night's game, Stars Without Number, and the spectrum of prep. And, and from, from lots of prep to winging it. And how I think there's the, the, the fruitful ground for me is a little bit in between. But it doesn't need to be all that much. You don't need all that much. What you have just has to be evocative. It's got to inspire you. If you're a jazz musician and you're, you want to start improving, someone better lay down a funky bass line. Better be funky. That way you can get it. It just inspires you. Your toe starts tapping right away. You're going to blow the horn. It's going to be funky too because you want to get in on this funky beat. That's what prep has to be like. Your prep has to be a funky beat. Example. Last night, we're playing Stars Without Number. They're in Sector Hades Zeta. Tons of prep for me. Lots of funky bass lines. Funky bass lines abound. And they're, they're on a trip and they want to, they're, on a, they're, they're going to a destination that's cool. But on the way, they want to see if they can find some cool alien artifacts. So there is a planet, Velen, planet Valenzuela in the Odysseus system. And it has pre-tech or alien artifact domed cities. So I'm thinking if, if the aliens left domed cities, if somebody left domed cities, then there's in the, in the blue jungles, in the dangerous, glorious alien blue jungles of Valenzuela, there are, there are some alien artifacts out there, right? And they've got uh, an, an AI that they have in their ship. And the AI crunches some data and spits out that, hey, I, I know where some alien artifacts should be. Based on the patterns of, of artifact findings on this planet that have been published in our public domain, I've looked at them, I've crunched it with my big AI brain, I think I've got something. Cool. That's interesting. They're like, cool, we'll stop there. Now, I'm thinking, that's really cool, the players want to find something. They're proactive, they're into it. But inside, I'm like, I don't know what the heck to do. I have not the foggiest idea. I did not have an alien artifact adventure planned at all. But I did have all of this prep, which helps. It's there. It's in the background. It's laying a baseline. So I went to page 247 on Stars Without Number. And they've got one roll wilderness encounters. Sounds good. So I'm going to – you roll a D6 to figure out the weather and the lighting. You roll a D8 for the basic nature of the encounter. D10 for types of friendly creatures, D4 for initial encounter range, D12 for types of hostile creatures, and D20 for a specific nearby feature of relevance. All right. So I just said, guys, give me a moment, which is, man, if you don't have that one in your tool bag, you need it. Players, when you need a moment, take a moment. Whatever that moment is. Back in the day, Cigarette breaks were the thing. I never took cigarette breaks, but I had a lot of friends who did. Now, just take a moment. Have the players role play amongst themselves for a little bit. Sit there, listen, grin to yourself, roll on a cool table. So that's what I did. I rolled D4, D6, D8, D10, D12, D20. Uh, Weather and lighting was night, but clear weather. Okay, that's something. Basic nature of the encounter was uh, people in need of aid. Okay, something's coming together there. Types of friendly creatures, curious local animal. Nah, I didn't really use that very much. I, I did talk about domesticated monkeys on the street, but I didn't really use them very much. They just didn't come up. Initial encounter range, I really didn't use that at all. Just wasn't, they were, they were landing on a planet. They were going to walk up as they wanted to. Uh, it was okay. I, I kind of disregarded that one, which is fine. No need. It's, a, it's an inspiration table. Types of hostile creatures. I got a brutal local landowner and their men. Interesting. And then I got what, what inspired the whole thing was, uh, for a specific nearby feature of relevance, was a, uh, a, a, a large dangerous cliff. Cool. So what do we have here? I've got a planet, Venezuela. It's got these ancient, amazing, pre-tech domed cities that no one knows how, who made them. Uh, I've got blue jungles that cover the alien world. Another little thing that, that the, is the sun's radiation will harm the 
pop human population. And that's why most of the population lives in these domed cities. Okay? So things start clicking in my brain. What have I got? I've got a landowner. I name her Anya Rabat. I decide that for this planet's culture, I'm going to mix together names from Spanish and Indian names. Maybe I'll take things from that culture. Maybe I'll take things from all over the earth. For now, though, that's the, that's the vibe I'm going for uh, in naming things because they've got, a name, they've got a name thing in the back of the book, name tables in the back of the book. So it just makes it easier for me. I named the town Palado, uh, which is Spanish. Brutal landowner, uh, a village outside of the domes. I'm thinking the dome, the, the, the village has its own little mini generator that generates a force field that keeps the sun's radiation off. But they have to pay the local landowner an exorbitant amount to upkeep the, the generator because the landowner is a jerk. So we're getting kind of a magnificent seven, uh, seven samurai vibe here, right? Uh, landowner and their goons and thugs, armed folk, villagers who just want to live outside of civilization, just outside the grasp, frontier folk, living out in the blue jungle, uh, you know, trying to make their way in the world. So you can see how these things combined together. My old prep, a little bit of inspiration, boom. Now we're riffing, right? I'm, I'm not totally improv, improvising, and I'm not totally winging it, but I'm using tools to create inspiration, and I'm using tools to riff off of what I've already done. Rather, I'm not going to make something totally new. I don't want to just make a whole new planet. I would have to roll a couple more tables to do that. But I use what I've got, create something based on that, and then the world starts to take shape. And that's what happened. And the players interacted with it. It was fun. I threw out the, the term, psych oh, there, be careful in the jungle, there are psychic tigers. The players flipped, psychic tigers, what are you talking about? And, and that's what I want to talk about, about things being evocative, right? What are the cool things about planet Valenzuela? We've got ancient domed cities We've, that, that, that have... Uh, you know, they, they keep people safe from the, the, the radioactive sunlight. Um, we've got blue jungles, dangerous, alien, beautiful, majestic, blue jungles. Cool, good stuff. When you're building your prep, sometimes evocative is better than thorough, right? You might not need to know every economic detail of your kingdom. But it helps to know that your kingdom is ruled by an actual talking lion. Very helpful. How did that lion become king? Right? How did that happen? Is it that when you become a king, you turn into a lion? When you become a queen, you turn into a lioness? Because that's just... Because the, because the gods decree it? Cool. Sounds good. Makes it easy to know who the king is. It's the person who the gods turn into a lion. Right? I think we know what's on the knight's shields who serve the king. It's a freaking lion. Does the, does the king kill off, uh, you know, cousins and, and, and possible offspring who could, who could supplant them? Kind of like lions do? Suddenly we can, if we, you know, once you build something evocative, you can find other areas to, to get your inspiration from. So once you say the king is a lion, then suddenly we can say, hey, let's, let's riff off some lion behaviors. So evocative, but, but that's not saying that all, you know, economic details are boring either. You know, knowing that the king has no lumber and has to make deals and treaties to get their lumber is very important. Hey, they've got no mines. They've got to get tin and steel from somewhere. What are they, are they thinking about invading next door? They've got tin and steel. Finding inequality, finding power disparities, these things can be really valuable. Also valuable are... are Descriptions, little things that give you something to latch onto. 
So that's what I want you to think about with your prep. Your prep will make your, your improvisation and your winging it easier, right? If your players are starting in a valley and they know nothing about that valley, and you're like, you know what? The, word, the word's laser lich has been zipping around my brain. I don't even know where it came from. I don't know where I got it from. Laser lich. This valley used to be ruled by a laser lich. Rumor is that the laser lich is dead or deposed or put down to sleep. Who knows? Laser lich. Cool. Riff off of that. What does that mean? Are there little wands that fire lasers found all over the place, but nobody knows how to recharge them, so they use them to hunt or to, to drive off bandits as they have to, and then uh, they throw them away because no one knows how to recharge these damn things. Laser lich. Is there, does the, did the laser lich have apprentices who are laser ghouls and laser whites? Is there a hierarchy of laser undead or different types of energy undead? Plasma undead, plasma white, laser lich, you know, shadow ghoul. Start riffing, play, daydream, make something that inspires you so that when you do have to wing it, you've got something to build off of. And if your game isn't giving you enough to build off of, if you can't look at the map or the system, or the tables, or the player's character sheets, and find something to be inspired about, then you need a new game, my friend. That game isn't pulling its weight. What is it doing out there? Right? Stars, I, I needed help last night. I needed what I really wanted, what I was looking for when I found the, the one roll wilderness table, was I wanted a table that made pre-tech artifacts, and I did not find that. Did not find that. But what I did find was the one roll wilderness table. There's also a one roll urban encounter table. Super helpful. Super helpful. Absolutely. Huge. Huge. Big help. I needed help. Stars Without Number was there to support me. Is your game supporting you? If not, you got some thinking to do. Can you build yourself some tools? Can you steal some tools? There certainly there are enough things around the internet where you can find them. And that's how I like my tables. I don't want my tables to be filled with cool things. I want my tables to be filled with basic things that inspire me to make up cool things. I know you can make up cool stuff all day. Inspire me and my friends to make up cool stuff. That's what I want the... the things on my table to do evocative stuff i don't want i don't want it to be cool i don't want it to be the end result i want it evocative so that we're making up stuff that goes along with it we're making up stuff that that shapes against it find the rules break them find them again that's what i'm thinking about because i feel like when we talk about Prep and improv It's just like, oh, we'll just make stuff up No, 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 no Don't just make stuff up Do a little bit of labor Do some work And then let that work help you the rest of the way That's how this should go And if you're doing work And you feel like you're not getting evocative stuff Something needs to change Don't grind your gears It's not you You cannot improv into a vacuum it's just, it's just, you can't do it. You know, the blank page is the worst, the worst, the worst. But as soon as you write that, that whatever phrase it is, it makes people go, oh, snap. And then they're playing. Then, now, we're, now we're in business. And that's what you need to do. You need to find that phrase that gets you, gets you going. Whether it's a, a, a king who is actually a lion, a laser lich, blue jungles filled with alien artifacts, and, and vicious land, landowners. That's what you need. So that's what I'm thinking about, folks. Let me know what inspires you. What's, what's helped you out when you were in a bind? 
When you just didn't know where to go next in your game, what tools do you go to? Where do you turn? I'm curious. I want to hear it. I want the next reply show to be filled with replies of tools that people use when they're just not sure when the players wow them with an amazing thing that they never saw coming. Yeah, we're going off the Queens Road. We're going north. We're gonna t- we're gonna go talk to the uh, the cannibal Vikings. What cannibal Vikings? How- I named them that so you wouldn't go north. We're going to talk to them. They can't eat everybody. They've got to trade. They've got to have friends. They can't just eat every human being that goes up there, right? Right? Yeah. They'll find out. Time to roll on some tables. Find out what those cannibal Vikings are like. But at least you've got that. Cannibal Vikings. Awesome. That's a good start. What inspires you when, when, when you, you, have to, you have to wing it a little bit? Where do you go? I want to hear all about it. Let's get to the inspiration. Go. Get some more inspiration for future games. Cool beans. Thanks, folks. The Sorcerer of the Wild Deeps by Kai Ashanti Wilson. It's a novella. It's one of my favorite things I've read, science fiction and fantasy, in the past five years. Really fun. It's an, it, it reads fast. It is about a young man named Damane who left home and he seemed to have come, came from a really cool place. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to spoil it, but I, I like the glimpses you get into his home and his learning and, and the wisdom he got from his elders, and, and it's kind of beautiful. Uh, and he's traveling with a merchant caravan, and he's in love with the captain who, who leads the guards, and the, the captain seems to come from a somewhat similar place as Damane. Uh, not quite exactly the same but that there, there's something between them uh, that is similar in their upbringing. And there's a line I love that, I, that, that really, for, some, for whatever reason, this is the line that, that stood out to me, this, this reading. I, I reread it. I re-listened to it over the past week. Tell your fevered brother this river died before the dragons burnt Delusa. I like the idea that, that there's something ancient that is so common that everyone knows it, and you can say it, and it denotes ancientness, right? Uh, you know, but does that that's so old? It's you know, it's before the Sphinx lost their nose. But but you can do it in D and D too, right? Ugh, that joke was old when Vecna had two eyes. Come on now, you can just have fun with that. It's a little world building, little world building tidbit that Kaishanti Wilson threw in. This novella definitely makes me want to pick up and play a, car- a game uh, set on a caravan, uh, a merchant caravan, right? Uh, it's an easy thing to do. You make up, I would say, three spots, the starting spot, the middle spot where you're going to drop off some stuff, then, and where you're going to pick where you pick up stuff, and then the last leg of it where you're going to go to the head to the big city. And that's that's a... A manageable bit of prep and and pre pre world building, you know, three places, and you can you can change the climates in the first leg and the second leg. So, for example, in this uh, in this story, they seem to have started in the desert, and then they're moving into more like rainy highlands, kind of cold, dank highlands, and. I, th- I think there's some that's a that's a manageable bit of world building three places and then the roads along the way and that's it and then you can figure out where they want to go and the, also the players can can stay in the little shitty merchant caravan stop midway they can decide I'm not I'm not signing on with this merchant he's a jerk and that's definitely a part of this book is the merchant trying to keep his guards. Uh, it's a really cool speech that the merchant, that Master Suresh has. I like the merchant caravan as a gaming tool. It kind of has the feeling. It's got, so it's got all the things that you, I like in, not all the things, but you've got travel, which is fun. Fun decisions to be made there. But it's like a traveling town. 
right? You're getting all these people. There are hierarchies within it, hierarchies within the caravan guards, merchants traveling with their goods, uh, drovers trying to keep the animals going. Who else is going? Who else is with them? Maybe the merch, maybe uh, your caravan is also on a on a pilgrimage road, so maybe there are pilgrims, you know, walking to and from holy sites. You you can add a lot of things in there so that the the it has a feeling of a community, a mobile community, and that is a lot of fun. And and Kaya Shanti Will, Wilson really drives that home in in very satisfying ways the 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 caravan guards feel like i don't know like an army platoon or or just a group of young reckless people thrown together in various states of desperation getting away from their homes all for various reasons uh you know some are are really well educated some are are kind of bumpkins, you know, af- away from home for the first time. Some have kids at home. Some practically are kids themselves. It's a lot of fun. Uh, different religions are, are are present. Different cultures, all clashing, all in a big mess. It, it's a fun conceit, a fun reason to get a group together. And. I dig the hell out of it. You got to read it. it. It belongs on anybody's appendix. And um, I just think it's, it's one of the best sword and sorcery stories to come out in, in a very long time, a very long time. So it's so dense. I, I've reread it a bunch of times and, it, and I'm still finding new things in it. And it's not a slow read. It's not like it's weighed down and it's this white dwarf dense read. It is not. It's a fun read. I breeze the heck through it, but every time I, I, I find something else to savor, right? Before the dragons burnt to Lusa. Nice. Nice. I could read that line over and over. Uh, there's a caravan guard named Messed Up. Doesn't everybody have a friend who should be really named Messed Up? You, you, you know the person I'm talking about? You know them? Can you picture them? Are they okay now? I had a friend who definitely was messed up. I'm glad they're alive. I didn't think they were going to make it. They didn't think so either. It's good. So check this out. The Sorcerer of the Wild Deeps. Uh, If you have any thoughts on it, please send it to me. You know, it's a fast read. It's a good read. Go to your library. Check it out. And, or go buy it. You know, it's it's worth owning. and And it's... It's worth loaning out and, and getting into your friend's hands. Uh, and if you have any gaming experience with merchant caravans, let me know. How'd that work out for you? What, what was cool about it? And, and what would you do differently? Okay? Cool. Good stuff. Thank you so much for listening to me today. I appreciate you daydreaming with me. Uh, more dragons to come. Uh, we should have, I don't know if we're going to have a response show this week. Uh, I don't know if I have enough and things are a little hectic, but I should have a show in the hopper for you next Sunday, I hope. And I'll see you all soon. I hope, you know, your, your year is going all right and you know, you're, the, the, we had a bit of a warm snap and now it's cold again, but it's getting a little bit sunnier and, and daylight savings and blah, blah, blah. So it's going all right here. And I hope it's going all right for you. I hope you're getting enough sunlight, enough vitamin D and getting your gaming on your vitamin D and D. Woohoo. Has anyone ever said that before? Did I just make that up? I hope so. Thank you. Inspiration Go. Thank you, Kayashanti Wilson. And thank you to my uh, Astral Dragon LLC Stars Without Number group for giving me cool stuff to talk about. I appreciate you all uh, getting together with me in gaming. It's been a hectic time. I'm putting my stuff in boxes, getting ready to move. And uh, times like that, it's really nice to have a game to be kind of a, a baseline, a nice, a nice consistent thing in your life. Consistency is good. 
that might be my lesson this year. Consistency is important. Uh, I think the year before that, what I learned was something about asking questions. And, and maybe I didn't learn it so well, something about. Uh, asking questions is important. I, I just think all the smart people I've ever met ask really good questions. And that means they're listening really well. It's, a, it's an important trait. So this year, I think, is something about being consistent in all things, you know, leading to good stuff along the way. I think that's how you you get your skills up. That's how you actually make things. It's just chipping away at it a little bit every day. And I'm not saying this to teach you it. I'm kind of saying it to teach me it. Anyway, thank you, Stars Without Number crew, Aaron, Jason, Witt, Pete, you weren't there, but you were missed. And thank you, everybody, for daydreaming about dragons. If you want to contact me, my Twitter is in the in the links. And you can tweet. You can mastodon. You can send me a raven or a pigeon. You can email me at judd.karlman at gmail.com. And I hope your inspiration goat is bringing you good stuff.